The 1964 International Stoke Mandeville Games in Tokyo, the 8th to the 12th of November. A black and white silent film. A coach sets off, passing a small group of people who wave. A plane sitting on the tarmac, with the coach parked alongside it. A man in a wheelchair is being loaded onto the plane via a lift system in the back of a lorry. The whole of the back of the van rises up towards the door of the plane. When it reaches the level of the plane door, the man is wheeled onto the plane via a ramp. The back of the plane with the lift system beside it, then a man on the steps up to the plane, waving. He climbs the steps up to the plane door. The plane reverses back along the tarmac. A view over the wing as the plane takes off, the buildings and fields below growing smaller, then flying above the clouds. The jet engines below the wing, then a view of mountainous countryside below. Now a map, with Japanese writing above a title reading The Miyagi Paralympic Village. Flags flying, then a signpost pointing to the different areas of the village. A futuristic looking stadium with a high sweeping roof suspension and a low-level building with a short, wide flight of steps in front. A group of people carrying briefcases are heading up to the stadium. People sitting on a low brick wall in front of another building with jutting out funnel-type windows. Athletes in wheelchairs are coming down a long ramp into a stadium. Some are being pushed, others are wheeling themselves. A road running through the village has coaches and cars on it, as well as people in wheelchairs. Men walk on the pavement while wheelchair users are on the road. A bus turns a corner while a cyclist heads towards the stadium with the sweeping roof suspension. A sleek car pulls up, and a man bows low as Crown Prince Akihito and Crown Princess Michiko get out. The flags of the participating nations flying in a long row. Now a parade of drummer girls in white outfits leads the way round the stadium for the opening ceremony. Next a banner for the Stoke Mandeville Games, then a procession of all the nation's teams, the Union Jack flag ahead of the British Paralympic team. Another flag bearer is followed by athletes in wheelchairs. The crowd sit watching as the athletes wheel themselves past, a woman runs across the field behind them. Now the Australian flag bearer marches past and the Australian team follows, some being pushed in wheelchairs, others wheeling themselves. Now the Austrian team flag, followed by the Austrian team which numbers about eight. Another country has only two members competing. Another country's team files past. This team is much larger with all the wheelchair users wheeling themselves. Then the Maltese team's flag followed by only two competitors. More teams file past the watching crowds. Each one has a flag bearer marching ahead of it, holding the country's flag aloft. Some teams are much larger while others have only one or two competitors taking part. The sizable American team, then the Japanese flag bearer, followed by the Japanese team, 
The crowd applauds enthusiastically. The teams are now all lined up on the field in alphabetical order. In front of them a flag bearer and a young woman holding the name of the country, written in English and Japanese. Now a man is addressing the teams and the spectators, talking into a microphone. He turns and takes something from the people behind him. Then hundreds of doves are set free, flying over the stadium. The drummers file past the teams in their white dresses. Now the flag bearers all head onto the track in file and march around. Now crowds of people in martial arts outfits take to the field, some in white uniforms and headguards, others in long black kendo robes. They run haphazardly around the field, raising their kendo swords. Now a man in traditional samurai armour leads a file of kendo fighters around the field. All are wearing headguards and padding. Now a marching band takes to the field in white jackets and dark trousers. A wheelchair user manoeuvres himself expertly through a tight slalom course, reversing and pushing himself forwards. Once he's through the slalom course, he continues on to a ramp, wheeling himself up one end and down the other. Another contestant negotiates a different part of the course, tilting onto his back wheels every now and again as he hops over a ramp, then on around another slalom marked out by flags. Another contestant negotiates the same part of the course, wheeling himself off the ramp and on round the slalom course, more slowly than the previous competitor. He manoeuvres his wheelchair round, reversing past the last set of flags. Now a wheelchair relay race, with two competitors speeding as fast as they can down a straight towards a teammate, who starts back the opposite way as soon as they reach them. The team in white is a fair way ahead. Coming back the other way, the competitor in the white vest speeds through the finishing tape. The team in black crosses the line a few seconds later. A wheelchair dash race, with one competitor steaming across the line a fair way ahead of his rival. Now the ladies wheelchair dash with four competitors. The woman in the furthest lane wins and the other three trail in at different times behind her. Another ladies wheelchair dash. This time the woman in the nearest lane wins, just a wheelchair length ahead of her nearest competitor. Now a precision javelin contest, with a series of concentric circles a few metres away from the wheelchair thrower. A contestant aims his javelin, and it lands nearly in the very centre of the target. Another competitor's javelin lands in one of the middling circles. Another thrower misses the target entirely, but the next one manages the second circle out. A javelin lands in the outer circles, while another skims the very centre of the target. More competitors throw their javelins, some landing nearer than others to the centre of the target. Now the long distance javelin. A competitor hurls his javelin as far as it will go and two officials check where it landed. Another contestant from the USA throws his javelin. 
One competitor leans back in his chair, moving his javelin back and forth, before finally throwing it. Now the discus. A contestant from the USA hurls his discus as far down the field as it will go. Another man is clinging onto the bottom of his wheelchair to stop it moving from the momentum of his throw. More competitors toss their discuses as far down the field as they can. One contestant takes a few practice swings with his arm before finally throwing the discus. Now the women's discus. The women use a variety of techniques to throw the discus. More female discus throwers. A row of dignitaries are watching them from a high viewing platform. Now club throwing. An Australian team member flings a short wooden club over arm down the field. Another man is using a different technique, swinging the club back and forth to gain momentum before finally throwing it. Another competitor waits for an official to check his wheelchair before tossing the club over arm down the field. American team members take their throws side on. Now a woman hurls a club. The men's shot put. An American competitor holds the shot put by his ear, checking that his wheelchair is stable before attempting his throw. Another man takes his throw and his distance is checked. Now a wheelchair basketball game. A throw-in is taken from the side. Number seven for Great Britain catches the ball and wheels himself down the court with it, tossing it to a teammate. A penalty throw is given and number 13 takes it, missing the basket. Play recommences, with the USA taking control of the ball momentarily before Great Britain gain possession again. It's thrown down the court, number 10 catches it, passes and a basket is scored. Play starts again, with everyone furiously wheeling themselves down to one end of the court. Number seven for Great Britain has the ball. He scores, and an attendant changes the numbers on the scoreboard, so that Great Britain are 65 to 20 up against the USA. Play continues, and Great Britain have the ball, wheeling it down the court. It's passed all the way back up to the other end, where the American number 24 catches it and quickly scores a basket. The British number 7 takes a throw in and the team pass it amongst themselves, quickly scoring another basket. Next, the archery competition. A woman in a wheelchair lines up her bow and arrow, then lets her arrow fly. Now a line of men and women in wheelchairs are all aiming their bows and arrows. The competitors let go of their arrows at various times. As more arrows are fired, one of the competitors stops to light a cigarette. Now a single archer fires his arrow at a target. The row of targets. Then a female competitor firing an arrow. Behind her, a man draws his arrow back in his bow and lets it fly. A team member from the USA aims and fires. Then a competitor from another country fires his arrow. Now a man not in a wheelchair 
lifts his bow and arrow above his head, bringing it down to eye level as he aims, then fires his arrow. Now a women's swimming race, with each competitor in a separate lane. Officials in shirts and ties stand at the end of each lane with stopwatches in their hands, watching for the competitor in their lane to arrive. Now the men's backstroke, and an official walks along the side of the pool, keeping pace with the swimmers. One swimmer is only using his legs to propel himself, while others use their arms. The swimmer in lane three wins. Another heat of the men's backstroke. Now competitors lined up ready for a swimming race. They set off, the three nearest lanes swimming on their backs, the other lanes performing the breaststroke. Now the men's breaststroke, with a swimmer in one of the middle lanes pulling ahead. Now a relay race. The competitors set off in their lanes doing the backstroke, their arms throwing up frothy white water as they plough backwards through the pool. When they reach the other end of the pool, their teammates take over, doing the breaststroke. From the swimming pool to fencing in an indoor arena, two competitors in wheelchairs fight each other, wearing white outfits and face guards. Their swords clash as they try to score points. Men are holding onto the wheels of their chairs to stop them moving. One competitor lunges forwards, then they clash swords, and the referee steps in for a moment, waving his hand. The fight resumes, with the two competitors gently circling their swords before going in for the attack. One competitor shifts in his wheelchair then makes a lunge at his opponent. He lunges again and again, his opponent trying to parry his blows. The fight continues. As the opponents parry once more, the referee calls time and they remove their masks. Now a women's fencing match. As the two competitors thrust and parry, some more officials arrive. From fencing to snooker, and a contestant in a wheelchair, breaking. His opponent aims for a red, hitting it and sending it rebounding off the pack. Now he's going for a colour. It rebounds, ending up near a corner pocket. He pots a ball in the far right corner pocket. Now he's using a rest to pot a colour in the far left corner pocket. He takes a long shot across the table to hit a red. Now his opponent in black uses the rest and hits a red. The competitor in white pots ball after ball, sometimes using the rest for long shots. He tries to pot a tricky ball, but doesn't manage it. Now table tennis with a men's doubles match in full swing. At the end of a rally, a man flips over the numbers on a scoreboard. Play continues. Then at the end of the match, the players shake hands. Weightlifting, with men lying on their backs, lifting weights above their chests, holding it for a second, then lowering it again. A competitor for the USA fails to lift a weight. 
Another contestant tries the same weight and fails. Then a third man succeeds, with an official quickly telling him to lower it again. The weights are adjusted on the ends of the pole. A man tries and fails to lift it, but then another contestant manages it. He lifts it again and the official gestures to him to lower it. Now an Israeli competitor manages to lift the weight, sitting up afterwards. The closing ceremony in an indoor arena with all the athletes lined up in their wheelchairs. Flag bearers march to the front and stand in a line, bearing the flags of all the countries that have taken part. Each flag is held by a man in smart military uniform. Up in the seating area, a choir begins to sing, all dressed in white shirts. Crown Princess Michiko hands trophies and shields to winning athletes, then shakes their hands. She hands out trophy after trophy. Then more dignitaries hand out prizes. As a young woman wheels a competitor away, he lifts his trophy high above his head. In the darkness, three flags are slowly lowered, the Japanese flag in the centre, the Stoke Mandeville Games flag on the right. The flashes of photographers light up every now and again. The flags are lowered to the very bottom of the flagpoles, while the crowds stand and watch. The various nations' flags are held aloft, and a salute is made as a dignitary leaves. Then the flags are slowly furled around their poles, by each of the flag bearers. The flag bearers march in file out of the hall to the applause of the athletes. Applause continues amongst the many athletes who are all smartly dressed. Now the jet engines of a plane on the flight home. Beyond the plane's wing, clouds fill the sky. Inside the plane, the athletes smile, wave and chat to each other. A sign reads, the aim of the Stoke Mandeville Games is to unite paralysed men and women from all parts of the world in an international sports movement, and your spirit of true sportsmanship today will give hope and inspiration to thousands of paralysed people. No greater contribution can be made to society by the paralysed than to help, through the medium of sport, to further friendship and understanding amongst nations. The three flags with a Japanese flag at the centre, then the flag for the Stoke Mandeville Games.